Welcome to Morning Man with Pastor Steve Myrie. This morning's topic, a real friend. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. 1 Samuel 19, 1 through 2. Solomon asked the question, who can find a virtuous woman? Now I will also ask the question, who can find a true friend? Finding true friends has been a struggle, even since the dawn of time. We've seen where, instead of being a true friend to his brother Abel, Cain chose to kill his own brother. There are various types of friends that exist. We have friends of opportunity. These are they who are friends with you, but only based on what they can get from that relationship. They are seasonal friends. These are they who are your friends, as long as those who they truly desire to be friends with are not around. Then there are true friends. These are they who are with you for the long haul. God didn't make us to be by ourselves. Oh no, the scripture reminds us that it was not good for man to be alone. Now this goes even broader than that of a relationship between a man and a woman. But we are beings that require companionship. There's a kingdom principle that exists that shows that there is power in unity. One shall chase a thousand, but then two shall put ten thousand to flight. Unity is so powerful that even if people are evil, but they are united, then they will accomplish that which they set out to do. Case in point, the Tower of Babel. It's so hard to find people that are genuinely in your corner, who genuinely love you, who genuinely adore you. In these days of social media, which truly, not social media, but rather anti-social media. Facebook is a typical example. One can have from 100 up to 1,000 friends in your friend list. But let's be real. How many there are really your friends? Many times people use their mouths and tell you that they've got your back, but then their action shows otherwise. It's not about what one says, but what one does that defines them. My experiences with friends have not always been good. I'm the type of person who if I consider you a friend, I'm going to have your back. I will stand up for my friends. There are times I would know my friends are wrong, but I defend them from criticism publicly and I go with them privately and admonish them because I'm a real friend. However, when it comes to me, those who I consider to be friends, if they don't contribute to criticizing me, then they will be silent during the criticism, which indicates that they are complicit with me being criticized. Now, this can leave you broken. It can leave you damaged. It can leave you withdrawn. And I've had that experience as well until I realize people are just people. Therefore, when it comes to friends, I choose my friends like Jesus did. Jesus had 12 disciples, but then from that 12, he had three which were closer to him. And then from that three, he had one. <laughs> You've got to know who is who and let them hold their position. Jonathan loved David as a brother and a friend. When David was about to come to the palace for the first time, dressing as a peasant, Jonathan took off his robe and gave it to David so that David would look good going to the palace came to the point when Saul wanted to kill David. Jonathan did something that was remarkable. Jonathan chose to betray his own father for his friend David. Understand this, that killing David was not just in Saul's best interest. It was in Jonathan's best interest to kill David. Because after the death of Saul, Jonathan would be the one automatically who would be king. Oh, Y'all don't hear me. But Jonathan chose his friendship above fame and power. I want a real friend. I want somebody who's going to stand with me, not only when I'm up, but they're going to be with me when I'm down. I want a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You got to understand, this wasn't talking about Jesus. Oh no, the two greatest commandments are to love God and then to love your brother. Many of us don't have a problem with loving God. Many of us don't have a problem with being faithful to God. Many of us don't have a problem with being committed to God. But when it comes to our brothers and sisters, then we fall short. The question is, who is your real friend? Your real friend is the one who always sends you a text to check on you. 
A real friend is one who will take you to KFC and because you're humble, you take a one piece. But your friend says, hey, I got this. Order the big deal. The quote of the day, a real friend is not only there with you when you're up, but they're there when you're also down. As you go today, go knowing that there are real friends in your life. And when you have real friends, hold them close to you and cease not to scatter your roses on them. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. Hey,